Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome on in to Clay Share Live. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, and each week we bring you a live tutorial from the Clay Share Studio. And you might notice something a little different. We are on the opposite side of the studio for tonight's tutorial. We're at the wheel throwing area, and I'm going to teach you all throwing basics, and we're going to cover cylinders tonight. Cylinders are basically the building blocks for everything else we make in pottery. It's the beginning form. It's the form we all start with. Now, some folks start with bowls. When I was learning, we learned cylinders first. You could not make a bowl until you could make a good cylinder. Now, if you're already throwing and you're making bowls, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But we're going to talk about cylinders tonight. And I'm going to give you some tips, some things I've learned over the years, things that have been taught to me and things I figured out. And um, I've had a few suggestions. You know, this was a broadcast that I left open to our members, our premium members. You know, it's one of the things we like to do along with all of our classes we do for them is we let them pick things. So we're doing a throwing basics on cylinders first. And then in prime time, starting at 6.15 p.m., we're making cake stands, wheel thrown cake stands. So I've got a couple of them drying up off to the side there. And we're going to work on those after. So if you're not a premium member yet, you can go sign up for our free trial. We have this really great seven-day option where you can just check it out, see what we have, see if ClayShare is right for you. If it is, you don't have to do anything. Just stay and hang out and make pots with all of us, and it's, uh, it's really fun. All right, uh, I want to talk about cylinders for a minute. So as I was saying, cylinders are kind of like the basic form. You need a cylinder to make lots of things. You want to make a mug, you start usually with a cylinder. You want to make a pitcher, you start with a cylinder. So this was a cylinder. This was a cylinder. I mean, is it technically still a cylinder? What makes a cylinder a cylinder? Does it have to just be straight sided walls, same diameter top and bottom? Can it vary? I mean, they are still cylinders. They've just been altered a bit, right? So this is a, a class on clay share. It's a throwing a pitcher class. I have throwing a mug. Uh, I have throwing a juice pitcher, a bigger one than this too on there. Vases, if you want to make vases, lamps, urns, all kinds of things. Again, you need to start with a cylinder. And it's just what you do to that cylinder. And we'll talk a little bit about that in tonight's tutorial. We'll talk a bit about when you make a cylinder, what you do to belly out, what do you do to collar in, which way do you apply the pressure, and all that. So this is a beginning wheel throwing class, but it's also a refresher for all of you wheel throwers out there because you always need a refresher, right? You always need a little something so that um, you can get back at it if you've taken a break from wheel throwing or maybe, maybe you've just forgotten some of the fundamentals, which happens to a lot of us. And it's good to go back sometimes and uh, start from the beginning again. So, hi everybody, hello, hello, hello. So I've wedged up some clay, I have it off to the side here. Hi Instagram folks, um, had to give them a shout out. And because my pellet stove that heats my studio is sitting right there, it's blowing directly on my clay. So I'm gonna keep the clay I'm not throwing wrapped up pretty tightly because I don't want this to dry out until I'm ready. I don't want it to dry, it'd be bad. Okay, how you folks doing tonight? I see there's folks from North Carolina tuning in. I gotta, oh, there we go. Gotta fix my mic pack so that I don't catch that in the clay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna throw some cylinders. Uh, this is 1.5 pounds. So you love the vase with the Mishima. Yeah, this was a fun one. Um, if you go watch Clayshare Con, so, you know, Clay Share Con is coming up in a little over a month from now. And that is three full days. And we have a fourth day with an evening program of an online ceramic conference. Like, it is fabulous. It's all free. You don't need tickets. You don't have to register or anything. So, I believe in maybe last year's or the year before, I did a Diamond Core Tool demo. And I basically did a version of this. So, if you like Mishima, you can check out my Mishima classes. But if you like the swirls, I think I did that in the Clay Share Con this past 2022, not 2023. Okay. Love the rollers behind me. <laughs> this is only a fraction of the rollers I have. Um, I have more. <laughs> I have a lot of them. It's a 
yeah. I mean, every one that I've designed, I have. Um, and then a few that have been gifted to me. So, all right, one and a half pounds of clay here on the wheel. And we're just gonna start. Now, if you're just starting and you're just barely new to wheel throwing, I'm gonna go over some things and help you out. But really, you wanna go check out my intro to wheel throwing class on ClayShare. Because one, it's free. So you just go and watch it. You don't have to sign up for anything if you don't want to. And two, it walks you through everything and we talk about centering a lot in that class. And that's really important when you're starting out. All right, so I've wedged this up and I'm just shaping it a little bit so that I can smack it down onto the wheel. And then we'll just smack it on center, I, I like to call this. And you just kind of seat it on the wheel and you're approximately getting it into the center. It's not centered. I mean, it never is. It, it would be magic if it was. You can't wait for Clay Share Con. I, I know. Clay Share Con's it's coming. We should probably be on the overhead. I thought we were. It's an obsession. A rolling pin obsession. Exactly. It is. It's, it's a thing. All right, so I get my clay wet and then I press in and collar up. And this is why if you are new to wheel throwing, I highly suggest you go watch that intro to wheel throwing tutorial because I walk you through all this in every tiny little detail. I'm kind of skimming over it a little bit now because our focus tonight is going to be on throwing cylinders. So we went ahead and cone up and then press down and then cone up again. So this is centering the clay. Uh, some people call this wedging on the wheel because what happens is when we do these motions, as we compress the clay, any air that might have been left in the clay from wedging uh, will come to the edges or the top and you'll feel those bubbles and they'll pop under your hands. So I speed the wheel up pretty fast for centering. And I like to throw very wet. And everybody throws differently. I find for me, if I don't throw wet, my hands will stick to the clay. Are those real mud tools stuck to the side of my caddy? <laughs> They're stickers, but the real ones are uh, in the caddy. <laughs> Aren't they great? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make a cake, right? That's how I describe the shape. Some people call it a beehive shape. Uh, it just depends what you wanna use for terminology. And we're gonna find our center. The intro to wheel throwing was so good. It really is a great one. Um, one thing I, I didn't mention here, you know, and I mentioned in that, is that your posture is huge. Like how you sit when you're throwing makes a great difference to your success. Also the moisture level of your clay. If your clay is really hard, you're gonna struggle centering. So make sure your clay is soft enough. All right, let's find our center. I just use my thumb, let it kind of ride around there, make a little depression and then press down to open up the clay. You've had your head under this wheel. <laughs> this is my Bailey Pro XL. Uh, gosh, I love this wheel. It's a, it's, a, it's a trooper. And the reason I went with the Bailey when I was buying a wheel and not another brand, although all wheels are great. They're just like cars, so please don't think one is really better than the other. It comes down to personal preference when you're buying a wheel. You're gonna want certain things from your wheel, and that's what you really need to get, is get what is gonna work for you, not what some potter is saying is the best wheel. Think about the things you want from a pottery wheel. What do you want it to do? And, and sometimes that might not be apparent to you right away when you're first learning to throw. So if you aren't ready to buy a wheel, you know, if you can borrow a wheel, throw at a clay center, maybe buy a second hand wheel that you don't invest much in, but wheels are, are not cheap. They are a big investment. When is Clay Share Con? It is, I have mentioned it on the lives. We've not published the date yet because I haven't put the schedule out. I should just put it up but it is February 22nd, starting at 5 p.m. Eastern, so it's an evening program. And then it's all day February 23rd, 24th, 25th. So it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all day, and that Wednesday evening, just like we're doing our live now. You've had your head under my wheel when you came up. 
for Open Studio Weekend. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the bottom here and make the floor. And to do that, we just pull back. We just pull back like this, just like this. I don't know which camera you got. That you went to the overhead. I think I'm going to do the thing. It's the thing where I pull up. I'm trying to go slow. I'm going to compress my bottom. Yeah, I need to put the date, a save the date post up on ClayShare. Have we sent emails out? In any of our emails, did we mention ClayShareCon yet? Not yet? The dates? It's usually the 20 somethings of February. And I set the dates for this year's ClayShareCon last year. At the end of last year's ClayShareCon, I gave the dates. All right, so let's pull up our cylinder. And one of the things when we're throwing on the wheel, the force of the wheel is trying to throw the clay outward from us. So as we're pulling up, if we pull straight up, we're going to actually flare outward, and we don't want that. So we want to angle in. And what I like to think of is imagine there's a string hanging right here in the middle of your pot. And as we pull up, you're actually going to pull up and angle in towards that invisible string. And that'll help keep your cylinder nice and even straight up to down up and down it actually can go in taper in towards the top that's perfectly fine you kind of want that you don't want it flaring out so if you're throwing cylinders and you're really struggling because they keep flaring out and getting away from you this is going to help you you tell hubby you're going to go play with bailey <laughs> i would probably never buy another wheel than this wheel all right see how i'm pulling up and i'm actually angling inward and you can see slightly, get a slight angle in, just ever so slightly. Let's do that again. Now I throw with a sponge. I find that it spreads the pressure out a little more across the clay, prevents me from digging in so much, and gives me a more even pull. And you see how I stop before I go all the way through the top? You don't pull through the rim, you pull to the rim and then stop and then we compress. So this is one and a half pounds of clay. This would make a nice small pitcher. This would make a very large mug if you wanted to make a tankard or something like that. This would be good. Um, I usually throw small mugs from a pound of clay, big like my regular 14, 16 ounce mug. I go with one and a quarter pounds of clay. So that's my standard for that. You got the same wheel as I have and you love it, but you can't get your bat pins tight enough. One always wants to come loose. Um, mine are locked on nice and tight. Um, put, I, some put some Loctite on it. Yeah, yeah. and that'll hold it. Yeah, because the, uh, uh, Kevin's going to chime in. Yeah, use some uh, Loctite on them and just take them to snug. But uh, because the pins are steel you guys can't and, hear that, Kevin. and the head is, uh, is aluminum, if you just try to tighten and tighten and tighten, you'll actually strip through the aluminum because uh, the steel is much harder. So just use a, a little Loctite. Um, on to, the, to, on the bat pins. I never take my bat pins off the bat. They are permanently on. Like they have been on it for so long, I don't think I could get them off. I mean, I could. With a little mechanical help, I could get them off. Um, folks on Instagram, it's Instagram. It's backwards. Yes. It's not. Um, I am not a lefty. I'm a righty. But everybody watching on Instagram, we have a three-camera view going on on ClayShare. So if you download the ClayShare app, you could go watch there. And it would be a better viewing. The little wing nuts. That's what I have under mine is wing nuts, oh, Jody. Oh, wing nuts under there? Yeah. Oh, I thought they screwed right in. Um, no. Oh. I mean, I, I got to find. No, they're wing nuts. I got wing nuts on here, and you just wrench them down, and mine stay. I haven't put anything on there. Oh, my, I, I thought they were screwed into the, I thought the head was... Kevin doesn't know. He's not a potter. You got a Brent Model B because you paid $75 for it, and that's right, baby. That's the way to do it. If I was offered a Brent Model B for 75 bucks, I would have gone that way, too. I actually won a scholarship as an undergrad student, and that's when I got my first Bailey wheel. The art department awarded me, based on merit, a $1,000 scholarship, and you had to use it for art equipment. I had to use it for equipment. I couldn't just have fun with $1,000. I had to buy 
equipment. And if you know how much pottery wheels cost, that's a thousand dollars to get a new one. So um, I got my first Bailey wheel with that. And then I won another scholarship and got my first extruder and uh, kiln and other things. So I was very lucky to get those scholarships. I worked very hard. I was an adult college student with two children and Kevin was deployed to Iraq while I was in school. So it wasn't, um, you know, it was a lot of work and I desperately needed the scholarship so I wouldn't have had the equipment. There was just no way. All right, so we just keep pulling up. We're gonna pull up, uh, talking about fingers placement. My inside hand is just slightly above my outside hand. And you can kind of see that little ring of clay moving up. I gotta slow my wheel down. You get ahead of yourself. So from one and a half pounds of clay, we can measure this and see how tall it is. When I was first learning to throw my professor, we were given a pound of clay and we had to throw an eight inch tall cylinder from that pound of clay. And that's all we did for the first couple weeks until it was dead even top to bottom. And it, it, you get there. Um, she would cut every single one of them in half so we could see what we'd done. And until she was happy, you couldn't keep anything. But you know, class would end and I would stay after a couple hours and uh, I would make pots and I kept some of those pots. She told me not to make, keep those pots and I still have a couple of them and they are like uh, door stoppers. It's crazy how heavy those are. Um, don't worry about your beginning pots. Don't, don't worry about keeping those. All right, so now I have a lot of throw lines in my pottery. Some potters really like all the movement that happens here, and that's fine if you want that. If you don't want it, you can take it out. I don't want it because as you saw in most of my pieces that I showed earlier, actually all but one, I do a lot of scraffito and mishima on my surfaces. I really like to carve in the clay, uh, draw on the clay, so I wanna start with a really smooth surface so that I, I don't have anything in the way, and also I don't want the lines that could distract from the design I'm putting in the clay. So I'll take a rib and we're just gonna pull up and I'm gonna hold the rib up against the clay. Now I'm not holding it jammed up against the side, I'm actually holding it at a bit of an angle to the clay. And what this does is it's gonna scrape any slip off the surface, which helps keep your clay from collapsing, from too much water, from becoming exhausted, but also it helps you to even the clay and get a nice smooth surface. So how much do I slow down when pulling up? When I do my first pull, I'm going a bit faster. When I do my next pull, depending how high you get, you go much slower. Um, it's, it's a thing you can't really say, I cut the speed in half, or I cut the speed in a quarter, because it's, you have to feel it. If you're going too fast, you will feel like you're going too fast. You will feel it, and you'll feel the piece start to get away from you. I am, I'm probably going right now a quarter of the speed of what I started with. I would say, um, yeah. I wish we had speedometers on our wheels. What would I need? A tachometer. Can I have a? T can we put a tachometer on a wheel? I wonder. <laughs> so, Terry, you start out throwing okay. You're doing makes it go wonkers. So I think. Um, if you go too fast, that's, you know, sometimes that's the thing that gets us. If, you, if you're just starting and you take a long time with the clay, what happens is that clay is absorbing the water you're working with, and the clay can only absorb so much water before it collapses and becomes what's called exhausted. And if you're throwing a pot and all of a sudden it just phew, falls apart on you, uh, it's probably become exhausted. And that happens a lot with clays that have a lot of porcelain in it, like this B-mix here or an actual porcelain. If you're using a groggier stoneware or sandier clay, you might get more work time out of it. So your first wheel was just the Amazon wheel because that's you can af what you can afford. Absolutely. I, I, like I said, was very lucky that I got that scholarship so that I could buy my first wheel. It was a Bailey um, 50 the Bailey 50R, maybe, I think is what the, 50R. my 50R is my first wheel. And then all the equipment I bought when I moved to Vermont and opened my own studio many moons ago, back in 2006, um, I took a business loan out 
So I went to the bank with a proposal. I had a business plan. I had everything laid out. I had a five-year plan. I was going to pay the loan back within five years, how much I could afford to pay, how many pots I was going to make, how much I was going to sell, and what I'd bring in every month. And the bank gave me a loan. I didn't think they would. Uh, because here's this crazy woman that has basically nothing and wants to wants twenty thousand dollars for studio equipment and they gave me the loan um, and I paid it off in three years so uh, I guess I was a safe bet for them because I worked all the time not not like now <laughs> so this is regular B mix 5 yeah absolutely this is regular B mix 5 let's do another pull in this Yep, this is Laguna B-Mix. This is the new B-Mix. And shaping with profile ribs. Do I go at an angle or flush against the pot? I hold them at an angle. So let's see if I can get that for you guys. Um, when we're looking at this, see if we could go like this, we'd be right at it. And if I was pulling up to get a specific shape, if I was using, like you mentioned, the profile rib, you'd want to hold it like this. But because I'm shaping it and I want to do curve, I'm holding it, let's see if I can hold, show you, see like this, like that. The camera's there, Instagram folks, so um, the one that's showing this. So like this, uh, let's see if we can. And so I'm holding it in and as I hold it, I'm pulling the hand up on the inside and then I'm just following. If you press too hard, do you see at the bottom I pressed in a little too hard, you get a bit of the edge of the rib pressing in. That can be fun. You can do some really fun textures. So now, here's the part where if you want to put throw marks in, you could do a very slow pull up with your fingers and make a very intentional throw mark. Maybe we'll do that on a cylinder. Um, because these are just fun practice. These don't have to become pots. Not at all. So here's our first cylinder. It's, it's pretty simple. Did I give the height on that? I was all excited to give the height, start telling my story, and I think I didn't get there. Uh, let's clean this off because it's dirty. It gets a lot of use. Okay, so we are at eight and a quarter inches. No, sorry, I'm holding it. Six and a quarter. Get that clay off there. When you have clay on your six, it makes it look like it's an eight. So six and a quarter, um, but we're not making it nearly as thin as I might have done if I had less clay from one and a half pounds of clay. Adding a speedometer means you'll also have to add clay police. <laughs> you, you're right. All right, so um, let's do this. Let's do some fun. We'll play. We're going to talk about pressure and how to make shapes. But since we started and I mentioned the determined, like the intentional throw rings, um, oh, I got a new tool I got to use. Hold on. I got to show it to y'all. So those of you who are in Billy Ritter's workshop, this looks familiar. Mine just came. I'm so excited. It's a little big for this. This is more tool than I need for the job. <laughs> this is more than we need. But the idea behind this is if you hold this at an angle like this and you pull up against it, it'll give you that angle. So you can create your own profiles. And this does a nice tall, look how tall it is. It's taller than the camera um, over there. Look. All right, so let's give this a go. And you don't have to even take this off the wheel. You just press against it. And it's going to flare out a little bit, but I'm going to get like this perfect line. So how about this for uh, a big giant? It's going to shrink. This is going to shrink 11%. We even have a big drinking cup. It's, too, it's probably shrink down. Maybe it fit my hands. Probably too big. But this is a mud tool, Cheryl mud tool. It's the... I don't even know what it's called. It's this L P. I don't know. It's a big orange, big olive green throwing rib. Is it avocado color, huh? Uh, I think it's L P, but I don't know. I just got it. What do I know? I just bought it from Sheffield Pottery. So because they had it in stock and I was buying Mason stains and other goodies. All right, let's put some intentional throw rings in it, but let's talk about the bottom. If this was going to be a finished pot, I, I would want to pre-trim the bottom just a tiny bit. And, and to do that, I just do a little bevel, a little undercut bevel right there. See, a little nice bevel. 
you have one you use for compressing large slabs, that would be great. So if you want to make something that's six inches tall, how much clay do you need for that? 16, 16 inches, thank you. Um, how do you figure it out? Well, you have to know how wide you have to be, and you have to figure out cubic inches. So you're getting into a length times width times height, but yet your inside is empty, so you have to figure out the thickness. So my suggestion for 16 inches tall is I would start with four to five pounds of clay. I would start there and see what you get, because it all depends how wide you want it to be. All right, let's get this a little damp, because we're going to do a, a pull that we intentionally put our throw marks. So I'm just getting it wet with my sponge. I mean, we could just do it this way if you want to, right? Squeeze a little water down on top. And then we'll quickly do the next one. I won't chat so much during the getting the cylinder set, but we'll talk about pressure. All right, so it way down, way, way down, way down. We're going to put our finger in here, and we're just going to go up. Nice and even. Slow and steady. Don't go too fast. If you start going too fast, what happens? Your throw marks become uneven. And then we come right to the top and then stop. Look at these crazy things. I used to make cups like this once in a while. And my daughter, my eldest daughter loves them. Like, she would come out to the studio and there would be the things she'd go to. So... Look at how bumpy that is. Now, you could buy a profile rib that would do that for you if you want. When you're pulling a cylinder, you're right-handed, and you pull towards your left shoulder. So I pull in this way. Yeah, I mean, I pull towards the center of my pot. Imagine that string is hanging in there, right? All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and compress my rim a bit, round it over. That's reasonable. That's fine. I mean, it's just a cylinder to get us started with a shape. The next piece of clay I have is 1.75 pounds, so it's a bit bigger. So we'll move on up slowly. And this is my suggestion when you're starting throwing. Start with a pound of clay. Throwing anything less than a pound of clay is very difficult. And it's really, you think, oh, it's less clay, it'll be easier. It's not. It's actually more difficult because you don't have enough of mass to get a hold of on there. So my suggestion is if you're going to start out, start with a pound, right? And then go to a pound and a quarter, then pound and a half, pound and three quarters, two pounds. You see where we're going. Go up a quarter of a pound every time until you reach your limit. And you don't know what your limit's going to be un until you get there. And then even then... Even if you get to, say, eight pounds of clay, nine pounds of clay, and you're, you're just like, that's it. There's lots of ways you can still make big pots, like we did in Billy Ritter's workshop this past weekend and the weekend before that, that we had. Um, you can throw big so many ways. You can also get something like the strong arm, which will allow you to throw bigger. Also, for those of us who, um, you know, like when I had hand surgery, I... One of the trade-offs for having my hand surgery was no pain for a uh, loss of some strength. I will never get that strength back. It's gone forever. And that was what my surgeon told me because they actually cut through um, my hands and there are things that just aren't connected so the strength can never be there anymore. So for me, throwing more than five pounds is very hard. I just don't have the strength to do it in my hands. It just doesn't exist, and I can't work out to make it better because the parts aren't there anymore. So something like the strong arm, which you can go back to last year's Clay Share Con and watch to find out what that's all about, um, and they're also going to be here with us this year. But it, it means now I sat down first time using it with eight pounds of clay, and then I did 10 pounds, and then I did 12 pounds. So, you know... There's always things out there to help us. There's tools and aids and things that'll aid us. That's why they're aids. <laughs> so you keep spiraling as you're pulling up for some reason, not sure what you're doing wrong. So if you're getting spiraling, it sounds like you're putting too much pressure as you're pulling up a little too fast. So you need to back off your pressure and slow down just a little bit. Because the spiraling is your, your fingers pressing in, and it's uneven because you're moving up too fast, it sounds like. 
Mr. Rich McNatt. Hey, hey, and hi, Mike from Canada. Bonjour. Well, I don't actually know if you're in French Canada, but. Am I glad I kept my earlier pots? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, anybody looking at them would be like, oh, she made that? Well, guess what? We all start somewhere. And I'm not embarrassed by my early pots. Um, my youngest daughter fell in love with them when she was little, and I just gave them to her, and they just live in her room. Like, she puts brushes in them and stuff. I don't know. I told her she could use it for self-defense, you know? Ever, ever have a home invasion and you conk somebody upside the head with that? They're not getting up anytime soon. <laughs> Is it possible to throw standing? Absolutely. Um, yes, yeah, so throwing standing, you have to think about your support, right? How you're supporting your body now that your weight is being distributed differently and you don't have the grounding of your knees on the ground and you're, you usually put your elbows in. So a lot of time when people throw is they like to set something up behind them. They set their throw, standing up wheel in a position where they have a beam or a wall behind them or they make special stand up like supports I've seen and you have that behind you and so your support is now at your back and it kind of holds you in and then you just put your elbows into your into your sides and you ground yourself that way. So it's a little different because a lot of people like to ground, like to do this. I can't because of the way I throw. Like they put their elbows, how do people put their elbows down by their knees? They must be just huge, I don't know. But my arms don't do this. Like this is not, it's no, it's not gonna work. I do the T-Rex arms to make pots. So the inside finger pulls on top of the outside finger. The outside finger is really pulling up um, on the bottom and the inside finger is just slightly above it. Your pots are weapons too. <laughs> That's right, all of us who make weapon pots. <laughs> Not intentional, just happens. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. So if you're struggling with throwing, uh, please go watch my intro to wheel throwing class. I've mentioned it a few times, but I see there's some folks chiming in that are just getting here. And we talk about finding the right thickness for our bottom. So I just set the floor in my pot right there. So we make cylinders. We're making a floor that's gonna come over and then go straight up, right? Come over and straight up. Bowls slope up. And I've done many wheel throwing bowl tutorials. I do a lot of bowl tutorials because I like to make a lot of bowls, I guess. I don't know. All right, so this one's going to be a little bigger. What we do here at the bottom, when we first center our clay and when we make our little cake form, that's really already determined the diameter of the bottom of our pot. You cannot really push this clay that's on the wheel head out anymore. It's attached here. This is it. This is your foot ring right in there. If you want a really wide bottomed cylinder, and cylinders could be as wide as the wheel head and only an inch tall, it's technically still a cylinder. So if you're going to do that, you have to think about when you are compressing and setting the size, you have to compress it out. So like throwing a large plate. We're actually going to talk about that in the cake stand tutorial next. So we're going to be making things with lots of clay. We're going to actually use a lot of clay. After you open, you lose your center. So what I would suggest is when I'm pulling back, do you see, I pull back and I'm not really moving anything except my fingers when I'm setting that bottom, when I'm opening up. And you just stay nice and locked in, keep your elbows locked into your side. If you need more water in your clay, put water in there, don't throw too dry. And try not to touch the sides too much when you're doing it. And again, you watch that intro to wheel throwing as a refresher, that will really help you. You just joined Deborah. Just join Clayshare and you're loving it. Oh, welcome to Clayshare. I'm glad you're here with me. So we're going to compress and pull up. So when I'm doing my first few pulls, my fingers are almost even with each other on the inside and the outside. The inside hand is just a hair higher, just a hair higher, just a little bit, not a lot. 
get a little more water in there. So you use this tool so you're half standing, half sitting. Yes. So I'm on a drummer stool, and you don't see below me. I have my feet on cinder blocks. So I'm not low to the ground. I'm actually, if I put my legs down, I'm in a kind of like Jennifer says, half sitting, half standing. Um, I really like that because what it does is it allows my back to stretch out a bit more than if I'm hunched. You know, it gives you better posture. So it's, it's a much better option. But I have these blocks here to put my feet up on because I like my, my knees up. And then I put them down once in a while. All right, let me continue pulling up. So this cylinder is going to be a little wider. But remember, when we go wider, you lose height. If you want a really tall piece, you've got to keep it narrow. When you go wider, you're getting that, you're trading diameter for height. Same thing when we add volume, right? So this is still really thick. So let's go ahead and thin it down and pull it up. So I like to do this in my first two or three pulls, get the height set. When you're first starting, though, please don't get hung up on that. It's going to probably take you five, six pulls to get your height, and that's okay. You know, it's better to keep practicing until you get it right than to worry so much about, oh, I can pull in three pulls. None of that matters. Do you see the coil moving up? Compress our rim. That keeps your clay from flaring out too much and getting away from you. So that's going pretty good. Let's, let's do one more. So when pulling equal pressure inner and outer to keep a yes, but remember, the clay is trying to flare outward from us, so we want to put a little more pressure on your outside fingers. Just a little more to kind of rein it in and keep it from getting away on us, because it's trying. Okay, so we have our height, and this was 1.75 pounds. So we used a quarter pound more than the piece we just made. So let's take a look at the difference. So you can visualize, because the folks on ClayShare are seeing there, one and a half pounds, 1.75 pounds. And actually, this would be a little lower because it's sitting up. I don't know if I can. It needs to go down to here, so you, cause, because up here is not fair, right? It's not giving you a fair, I'm going to pop this off for a second to show you. And honestly, I could have probably pulled it a little thinner on this bigger one. There we go. So you can see that versus that. So look at the difference. When you're weighing out clay and you're going to make something and you're like, ah, oh, one and a half pounds, one and three quarters, right? How much bigger is it going to be? There's your difference. One and a half pounds one and three quarters. It's significantly different. It's, it, it's exponentially different. So you can really see the difference between the two sizes. So when you're making uh, some mugs and you accidentally weigh one out a little bit more, you're thinking it's not going to make that much of a, a deal if you're trying to make them all the same size for consistency's sake. They have to weigh exactly the same for you to get the same results. Can you do wider and taller with more clay? Yes. So with more clay, that's going to allow you to go bigger, just like, you know, because you have more material to work with. So let's go ahead and let's use the rib on this. Get that off there. I'm going to get this wet. And I'll pull up the rib. Oh, I need to use my big rib. All right, let me do this one first. Then we'll play with the big rib. Forgot about it. So we're just going to pull this up quickly, scrape off the slip on there. So 
So even pulling in, it does kind of swell out a little bit. All right, I'm going to put this up against. This is brand new. I don't know if I should be trying to do this on. Oh, she's never used that tool before. Let's see how she does. She doesn't even know what to do with it. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. You need to get it pretty wet before you use it because it started sticking at the top. Did you see? And the clay started doing, yeah, that on me. The mat under the bat. I have a great tutorial on making your own little mat for your bat. Um, what do we call it? I don't even know what it's called. Kevin will find it for you. Bat gripper, bat maybe? It's. I don't think we call it a bat gripper. I think it's a... a no, I don't know. You'll have to look it up. He'll look it up. All right, so we wanted to talk about shaping, right? So before we get into that, though, what I want you to do, if you want to get better at throwing consistently, is pick a amount of clay that you're comfortable working with. Maybe it's a pound. Maybe it's a pound and a quarter. Maybe it's a pound and a half. Whatever you really like to work with, it depends on you. And I want you to throw 10 cylinders from that. And I want you to aim for... Throw your first one, whatever height that first one is. If you feel like the thickness is even, top to bottom, then go ahead and throw nine more and aim for the same diameter and the same height, if you can. Right? That's your, that's your assignment. And that will help get you consistently even pieces, especially when you're trying to make sets, like a set of mugs. All right, let's see how tall this guy is. So this one here is seven and a half inches tall. And the other was six and a quarter. So it's an inch and a quarter taller. That's a significant amount. Now let's talk about shaping cylinders. This really, this, this really is where we get to have fun, right? Shelf liner. It is a bit of shelf liner that we cut in there. Yeah. What is it called? We called it gripper pad. Why didn't we call it a Oh, back grippers copyright. Somebody owns that already, I think. Gripper pads for your bats or your work surfaces because they work great for everything. All right, when we're shaping, let's, let's talk about it with our hands because everything has to do with our hands. I've been throwing a lot today, so I've got wrinkly fingers going down. All right, when we're inside our pot and we press outward, we're going to do what's called bellying out, right? You press out, so you're putting more pressure on the inside hand and you press out. That's going to create an outward curve. Same goes if you press with your outside hand, you put more pressure on your outside hand, you're going to create an inward curve. So you have concave and convex curves. And it just depends on what you're going for. So let's, let's put that into motion. Let's make that happen. So I'm going to press out at the bottom with my inside hand. So I'm going to come down in here, and I'm going to press out. My inside hand is above my outside hand. Do you see the lump there that's forming? That is us shaping it. And just go a little bit at a time. Don't get too crazy and press out too much at once. If you do, what happens is it becomes uneven and it stretches too much and you can lose your pot. All right? So that was the first one. Let's do another. Let's do the same thing from the inside. Just, we're just going to work down here at the bottom for a minute. Pressing outward. This gives us a chance to refine it a little bit. Maybe press out a little more in areas that you want to have a bit more volume. Maybe I'll just take my, I'll just use my fingers so you can see what's going on. I really love my sponge, I gotta tell you. All right, so there is our outward curve. Now let's do the same thing uh, starting at the middle and we'll press an inward curve in. So just pressing inward. Still, the bottom fingers are under, and the top fingers are above. My clay is becoming a little exhausted. Do you see what's happening here? Can you see the ripples? It's absorbed a lot of water, because I usually throw much faster. And B-Mix being a porcelainous clay, it's really not. Likes, does not like a, water, a lot of water. Okay. 
So you can also use a rib, but I'm going to totally turn this on its head, go back in, and I'm just going to press out from the inside. What? That's not what we're doing. Do whatever you want. All right, let's collar in a little. Compress. So it's still a cylinder. It's got a lot of funky bumps going down in it. And you can actually go back into your pot and you can make these more pronounced if you really like where it's going. So make your 10 cylinders. Get your height. Get your width. Get comfortable with them. And then, once you've done that, start doing this with them. And we did a whole... Uh, I have a throwing gourd vases, I believe we called it, Kev. Is that what we called it? I did a wheel throwing tutorial where we threw forms like this. Um, we also made a lantern. I think we used this shape for the lantern, too. What was that? Does anybody remember that? That was uh, not this past fall. Was it this past fall? Fall before? I don't. I don't know. So I'm just pressing out from the inside. Making, it almost looks like two pots have been joined together, but it's one pot, right? One big bumpy pot. I'm gonna really press out this bottom one. Just a little bit. It almost looks like a bee, like a little bee body. It's so wet. Let me get some of this moisture off here. Because if not, what will happen is when you take it off the wheel, you could come back later and it will just have collapsed on you. I have had that happen. I have thrown bowls. I left the studio. The bowls were fine. I came back after lunch. The bowls collapsed because there was moisture still left on the surface, all this slip on the surface. See how I'm just scraping it off, putting it in my throwing water? Just get that off there. So if you find throwing with a porcelain clay or a B-mix clay is really a struggle, especially if you're starting. When I first learned to throw, I did not throw with porcelain. I did not throw with B-mix. I threw with a lovely groggy stoneware. And it was the kind of clay that you could put all kinds of water in it and it would hold up for a long, long time. So for beginners, I think that's a great clay option. I love these mud tool ribs. We can really wrap them around and get the exact shape we want. All right, I need to make this rim a little something. There we go. All right, so if you're going to remove the water from the outside, make sure you take your sponge at least and you see there's a bit on the inside, so we'll take that off. I'm just setting my sponge up against the side. If there's any water in the bottom of your pot, take that out because that'll come back to haunt you later. All right, so we make a wide, a wider, not as tall cylinder because it's still a cylinder. Metal ribs are great. I find the metal ribs and I, the metal rib of death, likes to dig into my pots. The plastic or silicone ones from Mud Tools are just a little less dangerous in my hands. I'm less likely to commit pot aside. I didn't, did I, mm, I didn't undercut this. That's okay. You know what? No, I'm gonna. It's not okay. Ooh. And when I set this down, I kind of smacked it a little hard, and do you see my pot went out of round? Let's see if we can get it back in there. Go back, go back, go back. So, so clay has a memory. Just kind of give it a little shove, and it tap, 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 and it goes right back. Be gentle with it. I use a screwdriver to lift these bats out of the holder. You can buy a thing called a bat lifter, but... A flathead screwdriver works just as well. But it's up to you. If you like the bat lifter, go for it. All right, let's get another one of these out. Let's see what we got for questions. 
Do I use the metal ribs from Mud Tools? Um, I have some, yes. Metal ribs, as I was mentioning, and I... <laughs> I have gouged so many pots with metal ribs. Um, the, at least with the silicone one, if I hit it, I usually just kind of skim it, and I don't ruin it, and I can fix it. But the metal ones... <laughs> There, I, they're not really, I'm, I'm not a, I think I'm not certified to use those, like, a, <laughs> but I do like them. You like the term exhausted clay. Uh, it's what happens though, it becomes exhausted. All right, this is two pounds. Here, is what we got. So none of this is huge amounts of clay. We're sticking with reasonable amounts, which is what you want to do when you're starting out. Please don't put pressure on yourself to throw these big giant pots. There's no need to worry about that at all at this stage. That's about all a flathead screwdriver is good for. <laughs> right? So take them out of your tool kit and take them to your studio. Has Kevin tried throwing? That might be fun to see. Kevin tried once. It was horrible. Um, he, that was many years ago and he's never tried again. All right, so let's cone up. Compress down. Cone up. Compress down. So we're going to make a wider, do you see how fast I'm going? So let's see, let's see if we can gauge our speed. Like I can't say a numerical amount, but going this fast, back off about half. Right, would you say it's about half? Maybe? Back off again by about half? You like the way you can bend the metal curve. That is exactly, so uh, Pat, have you tried these because Look at how you can bend these red ones. I can hold it in my finger. I can actually wrap this over the rim of a pot to get a specific shape and it won't, it doesn't flick out and gouge things. So that's why I love these. But I think the metal ribs are great too. I've just had really bad experiences um, with them uh, my, <laughs> due to my own <laughs> actions. <laughs> So if you like the metal ribs and they're working for you, please don't switch on any, because of anything I say. All right, so we wanna do a wider, we're not gonna go so much wider, we're gonna go a little bit wider, but we're not gonna go too, too much wider. Just, just, this is about four and a half inches, do we think? Let's measure. Mm, oh my gosh, do you know how good I am? That is four and a half, just, just slightly bigger than four and a half inches. Sometimes I impress myself. All right, let's find our center. Let our thumb right around, and then we're going to press down. Right? Just get a little more water in there and press down a little more. The only downside to using the water now is we obscure where the bottom might be, right? So you have to take the water out. I think about there is good. Now you can always use the needle tool once we open this up and set our bottom. All right, I'm going to do it. So watch, I'm just gonna pull back. And my hands are kind of locked together. You know, that's the other thing. When we're throwing, we always keep like our hands locked together and our elbows in, and we just are gonna pull back. So the only thing that moved there was my fingers. That's it. And I can already tell my bottom is crazy thick. So just compress it in. We're gonna take this little wad of clay out. Don't need that. So if you throw and you make your bottoms too thick, don't panic. You can compress it, and as you compress it, one, you're compressing the clay, which you need to do, and two, you're getting rid of that excess. So here's our bottom right here. And that's pretty good. We're gonna trim a foot on it, so I want it a bit thicker than if I was doing a production bottom, which is where we don't trim. All right, let's pull this up. How thin are my walls? I usually throw about an eighth of an inch thick is my standard throwing thickness. Because I do a lot of carving, and for me, 
uh, I do sometimes go to 1 16th, but then I really don't, I can't carve it. It's just, that's too thin to do the kind of carving I like to do. All right, let's pull up our walls. And I maybe should point out that I have my thumb over here too. I didn't mention that. I'm kind of using that as well to help me um, for that first pull. And then after the first pull, push the fingers in, pull up. Remember that string on the inside, we're pulling towards the string. Compress, do another pull. Scraping with metal ribs or red ribs will strengthen the walls well. Well, we're pulling up right now, we're strengthening the walls because we're compressing the clay between our fingers. We're aligning the particles. So that will help strengthen the clay. Uh, if you are compressing the clay as you pull the rib up and compressing it and giving it, um, you know, actually pressing it in instead of just lightly scraping, then yeah, that's, that's also strengthening your walls. Yeah. Okay, let's see, my glasses keep, keep falling down. I need to be able to see. All right, let's pull. I'm gonna slow the wheel down, slow it down. So think of that song, slow down, you move too fast. Gotta make the morning last just skipping down cobblestone. <laughs> Hello, lamppost, feeling groovy. Who knows the name of that song? There gotta be people here knows some. I won't even, I'll tell you it's Simon and Garfunkel, I'll give you that. You guys know this song. A production bottom is a bottom that you don't trim, all you do is lightly round the edge. And a lot of potters will do that when they're doing production work because it saves the time of trimming. So can you add clay back to the bottom if you make it too thin? I would suggest you cut the bottom out altogether and make a slab and attach a slab bottom as if you were hand building. If you've gone too thin on the bottom and you don't want to lose the pot, but can you put a blob of clay down in? It's not, it, it's more work than just throwing another one to do it at that point. All right, let's go ahead and pull up our side. So we made a much wider piece. And I'm keeping the thickness consistent. Uh, you know, when you go small, when you make smaller pieces, you might wanna go thinner. You know, everything's in relation. So when you're making little teeny tiny bottles, you don't want them to be an eighth of an inch thick. That would be crazy thick on those little teeny tiny things, like little tiny perfume bottles. Um, but when we're doing big giant bowls, if I'm making a sink, I'm not making it an eighth of an inch thick. I'm going closer to a quarter because that's a substantial piece. 59th Street Bridge. <laughs> yeah, I do love me some uh, Simon and Garfunkel. But I only like to listen to it on my record player. I put the albums on and it's where it has to be. All right. Uh, we did the shaping, the pressing out. Uh, let's do, let's do more coloring in on this one. Oh, this is a great crock shape though. So if you ever wanted to make like a fermenting crock, you know, something like this, a really simple shape like this is going to get you there. Let's see what we can do. Let's get it nice and slippy on the outside. I should have made the top a little narrower if I wanted to collar in a lot, but we're going to just collar in a little bit. So not only can you press out from the inside to get volume or in from the outside, you can use both your hands and collar in. That's what this is called. And so as you are collaring in, you're making the diameter smaller. You're compressing the clay. You're also thickening the clay a bit. So this clay will get thicker and you'll need to thin it back out again. And so you can just throw that and it makes it thinner. If 
but I think I really want to make a very wide bottomed pot. <laughs> the crackle of vinyl. <laughs> I love the warmth of vinyl. Like there's just nothing like it. Even modern music I have. Uh, so when some of my favorite bands release new music, they now release albums as well, vinyl. And I buy them and I listen to it. And it's interesting because it's a different listening experience. All right. I think music's really important, you know, for us as artists. One, it's nice to have it in the studio, but it engages a different part of the brain than making pots. And it helps to stimulate you and helps you to be more creative. So there are other things out there whether you know, it's listening to music, singing along to music, playing music. All right, let's slow it down. This is gonna be like a honey jar from Winnie the Pooh. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna switch to my rib and this other rib in a sec not from my wooden one. So I'm just basically skimming the rib on the outside along and all the work's being done on the inside with the fingers on, and I'm just barely pressing with uh, porcelainous clay, porcelainous clay like B-Mix or just porcelain itself, you hardly touch the clay and it's very responsive. Can push out a little more, but again, it's almost to the end of its workability and I haven't, been throwing very long with it. Like it's only taken a few minutes. This is going to be an apple shaped pot. Right here. And I think we are there. Let's give it a little bit of a top flare. There you go. That's fun jar. A very traditional shape. You love the store next door and you visited us. Oh, you picked up a whole lot. Yay! So you got a lot of records. I know they have some great records there. So we go there to get uh, records, we also go up to Rutland, um, which is about an hour northwest. I think it's actually north, northwest of us. And they have a good selection. Feeling groovy. <laughs> when I'm alone in the studio, singing happens. So does. All right, I'm just gonna wrap this onto my thumb just a little bit. I want to shape that rim a little more. Put that down. I have a habit of holding whatever tools in my hand and still throwing with it. It's just... There we go. This will get trimmed off, but the wall is pretty thin. And if we take this off now, because the clay is so wet, it could collapse. So by leaving it a little thicker, and we do the same thing with bowls, it's giving it more of a foundation and we can just trim that all away once it's set up to leather hard, which will be tomorrow. We'll trim this up. So is this as fresh out of, yeah, fresh out of the bag clay. And it does become exhausted really easy because it's porcelainous, because it has that kaolin in it. Kaolin cannot hold water. It will become oversaturated and basically break down and collapse. So the reason when you're throwing big pieces with porcelain that it takes so long is you'll throw a, like your cylinder and then you'll stop and let it dry or use a blowtorch or heat gun, stiffen it up a bit, and then you can add shape to it. So there's a lot of tricks you can use if you're gonna work with porcelain, but to sit down and throw any large amounts of porcelain or porcelainous clay, you're gonna really struggle. It's gonna absorb that water and become collapsed, become exhausted. So this was two pounds of clay. I've been working with this for 
oh my gosh, is it really 608? Uh, for a long time. I mean, you maybe got a five minute working time with this clay and then you should be done with it. All right, I'm, we ran out of time. And uh, <laughs> so once clay is exhausted, is it salvageable? Uh, you can wedge it up and use it again if it collapses on you. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. Now, next we're going to make cake stands. We've got them off to the side. And I've got to quickly get new water and change out everything. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Premium members, you will be able to uh, watch the next class, everybody else. This is just something we do for our premium members. We do the private broadcast. And I hope you guys try making cylinders. I want to see. I want to see your 10 and see how you do. And then make shapes with them. Have fun. Do some bumpies. Make stuff like this. Have a good time with it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Be well, take care, and make great pots.